So, welcome again uh, to all the learners to my course uh, Power Electronics Application in Power Systems. So, in last uh, few lectures, uh, I, I discuss this uh, the basic requirement of power system compensation. Compensation means it is a reactive power compensation I am talking about. Okay? And uh, you have seen that how a reactive power compensation at the midpoint of a uh, symmetrical lossless long transmission line can uh, be helpful in mitigating uh, the over voltage as well as under voltage. Also, uh, we have learned that uh, how a uh, midpoint compensation for a symmetrical lossless long transmission line also helps in uh, enhancing the power transfer capacity or uh, by in uh, uh, how it increases the uh, power flow through a power transmission line. Those examples I have discussed with uh, numerical uh, examples uh, in the last 2, 3 lectures. Okay. So, in this lecture onward, I will start the first type of power electronic compensator which are used uh, widely in uh, power system that is uh, SVC that is called static power compensator. Let us see what it is. So, we will start static power compensator. So, what is static bar compensator? It is it is acronymed as SVC. Okay. Now, what is static bar compensator? It is it is a uh, sand connected device. It is a type of sand compensator. So, in the last lecture, I discussed how a sand compensator impacts on power flow of a uh, symmetrical lossless short transmission line. Now, uh, if you want to model this type of sand compensator, one example is SVC that is static power compensator. It is a power electronic based device. Now, why it is power electronic based device, uh, what it does, uh, in which, which application of power system it is used, all these things I will discuss in very detail uh, and this, this, uh, 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 this particular topic will continue for uh, many lectures in the coming days. Okay. So, what is this static bar compensator? So, it is a it is a type of sand compensation sand compensation. Okay. Now, it is also a type of a device which uses the semiconductor switch or power electronic switch. So, it is basic schematic diagram, basic single line schematic diagram can be drawn like this. Suppose, this is the bus at which this SBC is placed. it can be also the midpoint. So, it what it has? It has a bidirectional switch or thyristor like this and it has a reactor. So, it is it is a single line diagram is something like that. of SVC. Okay. What it has actually? It has a bidirectional switch, one is this, this is one switch, let us say SW1, this is another switch that is SW2. Then what are the purpose of these switches? These switches, you know the, the difference of normal switch and a semiconductor switch is that normal switch can either be turned on or turn off. 
right. But uh, the semiconductor switch can be turned on, can be turned off or can be partially turned on that is what the difference is ok. And uh, here also these two switches whatever is shown in the figure they can be either fully turned off or they can be partially turned on ok. Now, there are various types of this SVC, there are various types of SVC. various types of SVC. The first one I will discuss that is called thyristor controlled reactor. The first one which I will discuss which will be discussed. is TCR that is thyristor controlled reactor ok. So, whatever single line diagram I have drawn this is basically a type of TCR ok. So, this is a TCR type of SVC. So, what is the purpose of this TCR? TCR is a basically control reactor ok. Now, what is the purpose of having a reactor in a power system? A reactor you have seen that a reactor normally is used to absorb some amount of reactive power from a power network or power system. Now, what is the benefit of uh, absorbing some amount of reactive power? You have seen I, I discussed this with the numerical example that uh, during light loading condition uh, there is a surplus of reactive power uh, due to the reactive power generation of the line capacitances and due to the uh, less uh, reactive power absorption by the load. So, when we have a surplus of reactive power, so voltages of the line will get increased and the line will suffer from over voltage ok. So, this is I discuss uh, uh, in my previous lecture. Now, uh, during that time we need some device which can absorb certain amount of reactive power thereby it will mitigate the over voltage. This is what exactly is done by using TCR ok. So, what this TCR does it, it absorbs certain amount of reactive power from the bus at which it is connected. Suppose, this is the bus at which this is connected. So, this is what a uh, this line reactor. So, at this bus suppose this reactor is connected. Uh, so, what this reactor will do? Reactor will uh, draw certain amount of reactive power from the bus. It will draw certain amount of reactive power from the bus and thereby it will help in uh, mitigating the over voltage. In normal power uh, system in India, if you uh, visit in several uh, power uh, regional power grid, you will see we all already have some fixed type of reactor at various locations, strategic location of a uh, power power grid, regional power grid. The purpose of those uh, fixed reactor is uh, to to mitigate the over voltage, especially when uh, there is a light loading condition. Okay when uh, the, the uh, power grid is operating at light loading condition. This happens normally uh, during midnight when we have a surplus generation of from our uh, thermal power plant, but we do not have that much of load demand. So, there is a uh, eventually gap of uh, this load and generation and which uh, uh, causes certain amount of uh, over voltage ok and that over voltage need to be mitigated by somehow otherwise this over voltage may cause uh, serious problem of the line insulators and the associated accessory devices ok. So, so the here this TCR is a control reactor as I you can uh, see the name it is a control reactor. So, the difference of the fixed reactor and the control reactor is that 
this fixed reactor either you can turn on and turn off. The control reactor you can turn on, you can turn off, also you can partially turn on. Now, what is the need of this partially partial turn on? You know that load uh, throughout this power system is varying in nature, okay. load never be a fixed. So, sometimes load is very light during midnight, sometimes uh, load demand reaches to the peak value. For example, right now uh, in India it is a scorching summer. So, peak demand during evening uh, is very, very high, so uh, extremely high. So, so but uh, during midnight it is relatively uh, uh, less and uh, so load is changing throughout a day with the season also. So, during this uh, summer in, in, in country like India is having uh, peak demand during winter our demand used to be less. So, load is a parameter which is always changing, it does not remain same. So, therefore, when load is changing uh, this, this voltage conditions of the line will also get change. Sometimes it you will see there is a over voltage, sometimes there is under voltage as well. Okay. So, we need the mitigation of both over voltage and under voltage. Now, depending upon the amount of over voltage uh, there in the network, this TCR can offer can be controlled to operate, so that we can mitigate that over voltage. Okay. But if you keep it a fixed reactor, then uh, this same reactor may cause serious under voltage during peak load condition. Those things I hope that you should understand. Okay. Now, this is this is what the single line diagram of a TCR. Now, what we will do is that we will draw this operating uh, principle. Okay. So, basic operating principle. basic operating principle. So, here we will take a assumptions, here also our assumptions will be, this assumptions we will uh, consider throughout the course that the, the whole unit is lossless. So, whole TCR unit is lossless. Okay. All right. Now, suppose uh, this voltage at this particular bus is represented by uh, this, this V t, voltage at this particular bus is represented by V t. So, V t represents instantaneous voltage okay, of that particular bus okay. and the current flowing through this uh, this this particular reactor is suppose I t I I of t. So, I of t is basically represents the instantaneous current. Okay. Now, how this uh, this V of t and I of t they are related to each other. So, you know that if we apply K V L over this particular uh, single line diagram or this particular network, then what we will get uh, this V t V of t is mal, uh, minus this voltage drop due to this line, uh, uh, this line inductance, which is L d i of t d t is equal to 0. Okay. All right. So, what we can write that V of t is equal to L d i of t d t. Now, let us consider, let us assume that that we have, we have purely sinusoidal voltage source, which is represented by some peak voltage or maximum voltage V m sin omega t. Okay. So, here omega is your uh, supply frequency, power frequency, V m is the peak value of this voltage and uh, so this is our source voltage or the voltage at this particular bus at this particular bus, this at this particular bus, where this uh, uh, your uh, uh, TCR is connected. Okay. So, if you uh, apply this, then what we will get? We will get, uh, we can find out I of t is equal to 1 upon L integration of 
v of t dt okay now there should be an a constant if it is uh, not definite integral okay so what we can write if we put this v of t over here so then this will be 1 upon l integration vm sin omega t plus a constant where c is a arbitrary constant c is a arbitrary constant okay now so this we can write it as minus 1 upon omega l vm cos omega t plus constant so this is what the expression of i of t now what is i of t i of t is the instantaneous current drawn by this tcr so here we just represent a tcr like a uh, reactor where we have uh, semiconductor switch connected uh, which is a bidirectional so both side uh, of this uh, voltage away from positive and negative side this can conduct and therefore we get a uh, expression of the current flowing through this tcr from that now what is to be done we have to find out this arbitrary constant c so we have to find out the expression for c and we have to put it over here in order to find out this uh, this constant c what you have to do you have to apply a boundary condition now before i apply this boundary condition let us see that how would be the voltage and current waveforms when you have this type of uh, tcr unit connected to a particular bus now suppose we consider this uh, this this supply voltage or voltage at the bus at which this tcs is connected is a sinusoidal source so i can draw it so it is a so suppose this is v of t okay so so it is basically represented a perfect sinusoidal voltage source so this is what the v of t okay with respect to t or omega t okay now this peak value of this is basically vm okay now let us assume that we have as i said the switches the switches the switches or i should write it here the switches that is sw1 and sw2 either can be fully turn on fully turn on or they can be partially turn on or they can be fully turn off so these are the three different modes of operation of the switches now let us consider the switches are fully turn on then what would be the waveform that you will get uh, this current wave from so if uh, uh, this uh, switches are fully turn on then uh, there would be a, a 90 degree phase angle difference when you have apply a voltage uh, purely sinusoidal voltage source across a pure uh, inductive load or pure inductive element so here we assume that uh, there is no losses the unit is lossless so only uh, this reactor is having some inductance and when you have so so as you know if we apply a sinusoidal voltage across a inductive uh, element so it will conduct and this current will lag pi by 2 with respect to supply voltage so that is what the waveform of the current so this is what the waveform of the current when uh, these uh, switches are fully on this is when the switches are fully on fully turned on okay or fully conducting okay so that's what the uh, you know uh, plot of this voltage current or the wave voltage current waveforms of a tcr unit is very simple to understand for 
uh, electrical engineering student. Now, what will happen uh, when it is a partially turn on? So, let us draw this waveform once again. So, when the switches are partially turn on, so this is suppose V of t, this is omega t. So, this is the sinusoidal voltage source. Okay. And this is what the peak value. So, when uh, this, this uh, switches are partially turn on, then how would be the waveform? This waveform will be something like this, something like this. Okay. So, something like this. Okay. So, these are the waveforms for I of t when switches are switches are partially turn on partially partially on let us write partially on okay so that would be the uh, voltage and current waveforms so that would be the voltage and current waveforms and when they are off you know that uh, this this waveform will come to this point and it represents there is no I of t, I of t is 0. Okay. So, that is what the three uh, different modes of operation of switches and uh, since this, this uh, TCR, it is a controlled reactor. So, it is expected that it will be uh, always, uh, it is turning on would be always controlled. Now, the question is who is basically controlling this turn on of this particular switches? Here is a concept of firing angle. So, those who have have a basic understanding of power electronics uh, systems, they know that there is something called alpha. Alpha is called uh, firing angle or delay angle, which is basically controlling the turn on uh, instants of the switches. Now, the question is how do we measure this or what is uh, this particular firing angle? from where to measure. Now, here is there is a difference. In different book, they use different instants to measure this firing angle. So, here uh, basically I follow two different books. One is Hingarani's books, another is Mathur Varma's book. So, this firing angle in Hingarani books, in Hingarani book, if you follow this Hingarani's book, it is a legendary book, then you will see this firing angle is measured uh, from alpha, this firing angle it is represented by the Greek letter alpha. So, here you will find alpha is measured from peak of the system voltage. Okay. So, what does it mean actually? So, uh, so, here you see that this is the peak of that system voltage and this is the negative peak. So, alpha is measured from this, this point, from this instant. So, here for this particular diagram, according to the Singaranis book, alpha is this angle. Okay. So, alpha is the angle measured from the peak value either positive peak or negative peak of the system voltage or of the uh, voltage of the bus at which this TCR is connected. Okay. But, if you follow this Mathur Varma's book, Mathur Varma's book, Then you will see alpha is measured, alpha is measured from 0 crossing voltage, 
zero crossing voltage instant. It means that according to this Mathur Varma's book, this is the zero crossing voltage, this is also the zero crossing voltage. So, this is zero crossing and going to a positive side, this is zero crossing uh, going to the negative side. So, according to the Mathur Varma's book, so this this is the measurement of alpha. Okay. So, if you look at this fully turn on condition, uh, so I cannot show this value of alpha when we have this Hingoranis book because alpha is equal to 0 because it is measured from the peak value of the system voltage. It is measured from the peak value of the system voltage. However, from this in Mathur Parma's book, it is saying that since it is measured from the 0 crossing voltage, so alpha is this for this according to the Mathur Varma's book. Now, if it is so, then what would be the range of this alpha? What would be the range of this alpha? So, for Mathur Varma's book, Varma's book, alpha the range of alpha is from uh, pi by 2 to pi because you know you can see that when uh, the, at this instant when the thyristor is fully turned on alpha is equal to pi by 2 okay and uh, for this partially turn on alpha is greater than pi by 2 and when it is fully turned off then alpha is equal to pi so that is what the range of the alpha according to the measurement if you follow the mathur varma's book however in hingoranis book in Hingoranis book, Hingoranis book, the range of alpha is equal to. So here you can see there here alpha is equal to zero, which corresponds to the switches fully turn on. So alpha will belong to zero to pi by two. And here you can see the alpha when alpha is equal to pi by two, uh, this this. Uh, uh, it is fully turn off. So, the variation of alpha according to Hingoranis book is 0 to pi by 2, whereas uh, this variation of alpha or firing angle according to Mathu Varma's book is uh, from pi by 2 to pi. So, either of this convention is to be followed. Okay. So, here I will uh, follow this Mathu Varma's convention that means that we will consider that alpha is uh, measured from the zero crossing voltage that means when the voltage wave from crosses zero voltage so you can see this happens uh, once before it goes to positive it happens another time when it goes to negative and then it gets repeated because you know that uh, all these voltage current uh, signals are a periodic signal okay now uh, we, we will find out the expression of this arbitrary constant c by uh, uh, putting the boundary condition. Okay. So, what would be the boundary condition I should put? If we follow this Mathur Varma's convention, that means alpha will uh, start from this pi by 2 and it will go up to pi. Okay. So, that means when you have this, this, this omega t is equal to alpha, omega t is equal to alpha, then you can see that uh, according to this Mathur Varma's book, the current will start from 0. So, that means the boundary condition I should use boundary condition to determine determine the expression of the constant c. So, what uh, boundary condition we will put that at omega t is equal to alpha i of t is equal to 0. This convention is according to Mathur Varma's convention of measuring alpha.
Mathur Verma's convention to measure alpha. Okay. So, we will put this uh, into this equation and then we will find out this uh, expression of this C. Before that, I should tell another uh, angle which is also used in uh, this TCR when it is partially conducting or maybe fully conducting that is basically called this angle sigma. The Greek letter sigma is representing the conduction angle conduction angle. Alpha is representing firing angle and sigma is representing conduction angle. So, this is what sigma for this case this is what the sigma is and so on. Okay. Now, there is a relationship between alpha and sigma. What would be the relationship? You can see that alpha plus sigma by 2 that means up to this point. So, this will represent alpha plus sigma by 2 this is nothing but the representation of angle pi by 2. Okay. So, many times we, we need to use this in order to find out various uh, expressions. Okay. So, we can write we also find we also find finds the relationship we also find the relationship alpha plus sigma by 2 is equal to pi by 2. Okay. So, this where alpha is a representation of this firing angle, sigma is the conduction. So, firing angle plus half of the conduction angle is basically so their summation is equal to pi by 2. Now, let us put this expression over here when you put omega t is equal to alpha i of t is equal to 0. So, if we uh, put it uh, here in this expression then what do we get left hand side 0 right hand side minus 1 upon omega l v m sin alpha plus c that is equal to 0. So, that means that c is equal to 1 by omega l v m sin alpha. Okay. So, this is what we get from this boundary condition, but remember this boundary condition we use the convention of this Mathur Verma, where alpha is measured from the 0 crossing instant of the supply voltage or source voltage. Now, what we will do? We will put this expression over there. If we put this expression over here, then what we get? We get i of t is equal to minus v m divided by omega l multiplied by sin omega t minus sin alpha. So, this is what the relationship that we obtain. Okay. Now, what is that relationship? Uh, this is the expression of the current flowing through this TCR when it is operating either fully conducting or partially conducting or even non-conducting. Okay. So, you can put the values of alpha appropriately, we will get the equation valid. Now, what we will see from the equation? What is the challenge of this particular this current wave from that we get for in TCR? The main challenge you can see is that this, this i of t unlike this v of t is non-sinusoidal. Okay. But it is periodic, but it is non sinusoidal, but it is periodic. Why it is non sinusoidal? Because of this partial conduction or partially on mode of operation of the switches. However, when the switch is fully turned on, then I of t is of perfectly sinusoid. Okay. So, only this particular condition when this um, uh, switches are fully turned on, then you get the current perfectly sinusoidal. Okay. However, when there is a partial conduction mode of operation, then it is like a non sinusoid. Okay. Now, so therefore, when uh, the something is non sinusoid, but periodic we can represent it in terms of Fourier series 
and there would be some harmonics exist and that is what one of the challenge okay so one of the challenge one of the challenges for the partial conduction mode of partial turn on or partial conduction mode of mode of TCR switches is harmonics. Okay. So, looking at this equation you understand that this is not a equation of a perfectly sinusoidal or perfectly sinusoid signal, but they are uh, having some sort of harmonics. So, we need to uh, find out this harmonics of this uh, line current when we operate a TCR in partially conducting mode. Okay. So, we will find out this harmonics also most importantly that we need to find out the fundamental uh, component of this harmonic current that is the line current flowing through the uh, TCR reactor. Okay. So, we have to find out also the fundamental. So, what is to be done? So, we need to have a uh, harmonic analysis also we need to have find out the fundamental. So, if we analyze it uh, harmonic, if we do this Fourier analysis, then we will see that even harmonic should be not present because there will be half wave symmetry of this waveform that I have shown over here in this voltage current uh, waveform. So, there would be no odd harmonic, but uh, there will be no even harmonic. Uh, there, but there would be odd harmonics. Okay. So, what is to be done is that what is the main challenge is to find out the fundamental. So, to find them um, to find the fundamental of of the current flowing through TCR. what is to be done? We need to have Fourier analysis and as you know that we can find out this A coefficient fundamental A coefficient by 4 up by T integration of 0 to T by 2 F x cos 2 pi x divided by T d x. Okay. So, in that way we can uh, find out the fundamental component of the co uh, this coefficient A 1. Similarly, we can find out this all uh, e uh, odd harmonic uh, coefficient also and if you find out then what we will get the fundamental current fundamental current would be equal to I T C R, I am using this capital sign to represent the fundamental minus V m divided by omega L divided multiplied by 2 minus 2 alpha divided by pi minus sin 2 alpha divided by pi. So, this is I, I personally obtained through this from this particular integration. Okay. Now, the question is how do you do this integration? So, what you can do is that you can split this uh, 0 to uh, t by 2 into two this this ranges one is from 0 to sigma by 2 omega this is one range another is from alpha to pi by omega. If you use this properly then you will come up with this expression. Remember if you follow this Mathur's Varma book then there is a typo in a particular edition which I have followed. Okay. But uh, if you do it this integration correctly, you will be coming up with a fundamental current expression like this. Okay. So, if you wish that I can show you in very detail how this integration has been done, but right now I am just leaving it for you to find this fundamental current from this particular expression from this particular waveforms. Okay, from this particular waveform. 
So, if you do this integration correctly, you will surely arrived at this fundamental current. Okay. So, from this fundamental current, what we will see is we, we can uh, plot this fundamental current with respect to this alpha. Okay. So, so, let us plot this with respect to alpha. So, this is I of T C R which represents fundamental current flowing through the T C R and this represents alpha. And as you know that we are, I, we are following this Mathur Verma's convention where the range of this alpha is pi by 2 to pi. Okay. So, that means we will keep this range from pi by 2 to pi. Okay. Now, simply if you use this, this particular expressions in any language you know, for example, MATLAB or C plus plus or whatever. And if you plot this waveform, here I am just neglecting this negative sign. Okay. And if you plot this, this particular expression over here, then what we will get it that this plot I am, it is not ITCR plot, rather it is the plot of this uh, 2 minus 2 alpha by pi minus sin 2 alpha by pi. So, this is what the function which is function of this alpha. So, if you plot this in MATLAB, then what you will get the plot would be something like this. Okay. So, that means when alpha is equal to pi by 2, this expression if you put alpha is equal to pi by 2, this expression uh, would be equal, this will come out to be 1. When alpha is equal to pi, then this would be equal to 0, this will be equal to 0. Al when alpha is equal to pi, you can verify uh, from this particular expression that whether this is happening or not. Okay. Now, if you multiply this, uh, this is nothing but a fixed multiplier. If you multiply this accordingly, you will get the plot of the fundamental current with respect to alpha. Okay. So, for any value of alpha uh, which is in between pi by 2 to pi, you can find out what is the you know fundamental component that you will be getting. Of course, you can see when alpha is equal to pi by 2, that means near to this region, when alpha is equal to pi by 2, it is this I t is basically operating fully conducting mode, uh, that means switches are operating in fully conducting mode. So, the uh, fundamental component is higher. However, when it is operating it partially conducting mode, so it is fundamental value gets reduced and when you increases this alpha further like this, if I increase this alpha further, then let us what will happen. So, if you increase this alpha further. So, you know the amplitude of this will also get changed like this and then it will be 0 when it is fully turned off. That means, according to this Mathur Verma's convention, if you consider this alpha is varying from pi by 2 to pi, if you incre keep on increasing alpha, that means you are going uh, from uh, uh, fully conduction mode to uh, fully condux, uh, fully uh, non conduction mode. That means, here at this particular point, it is operating at fully conduction mode, fully turn on cas. Here it is fully off, which are fully on and which are fully on, of course, that switches are fully on, switches are fully on and switches are fully off. Okay. So, this is something that you need to understand. So, as we go in go on uh, keep on increasing the value of alpha, you are basically reducing the fundamental current of the TCR. So, in many times we need that when we have this slow change of this load uh, changing from this very light load condition to full load condition, we need uh, this partial mode of operation of the TCR. For example, when uh, this line is operating in uh, light loading condition. This this thyristor switches should be fully turned on, and then if the load is keep on increasing, uh, load is kept on increasing. So as this uh, alpha value or this firing angle value should we increase so that this bar uh, amount uh, that the TCR is absorbed is getting reduced. Okay, so, that is how it will work. 
Now, what could be our remark? So, if I summarize this whole analysis, then you will see that. So, first of all, if if we write this ITCR expression once once again, so this is nothing but minus V m by omega l multiplied by this two minus two alpha divided by pi minus sin two alpha divided by pi. Okay. Now, if we consider that one by omega l, what does it represent actually? It represents what is omega l? Omega l basically represents the reactance of the line. So, it is x l if you represent the reactance of the not reactance of the line I should say it is reactance of the reactor of the TCR. So, x l is x l is TCR reactance. Now, what what is 1 upon this reactance? This is basically B L. So, that is called T C R susceptance. Okay. So, a reciprocal of the reactance is susceptance. So, this can be written as minus V m B L multiplied by 2 minus 2 alpha by pi minus sin 2 alpha by pi. Now, here V m is always constant, okay. V m is always constant, but remember if we consider it V m then the basically this I T C R will represent the peak value of the fundamental things. Now, if you divide it by this uh, root to both side then that will be represent the uh, this this uh, uh, this R m s component. Uh, now, the question is if we consider that this equation, then what we will see that basically this T C R is nothing but a susceptance uh, whose uh, susceptance value is getting changed with this uh, firing angle that is alpha. So, that means, first remark will be T C R acts as a variable susceptance. because this B L is not getting change, but uh, the multiplier of the B L that is this will getting ch getting change according to this alpha. Okay. So, if we consider that overall susceptance of this is B T C R, then the B T C R would be equal to B L multiplied by 2 minus 2 by 2 alpha by pi minus sin 2 alpha by pi. Now, you can see this B T C R is varying with alpha. So, that is why it we wrote that T C R acts as a variable susceptance. Okay. Now, we can write the susceptance of T C R changes with firing angle, firing angle that is alpha. Okay. So, susceptance is changing of the firing angle. What would be third remark? Third remark will be in addition to, to the fundamental, fundamental, there are various harmonics exist in TCR current. Okay. So, in addition to the fundamental, there are various harmonics exist in TCR current. Those harmonics will uh, dis, uh, regarding those harmonics we will discuss in my next lecture, but if we summarize up to what we learn is uh, if you look at if we go back and uh, look at the whole uh, uh, workout, uh, you can see that we are talking about SVC, 
SBC is not a single device, rather it is it consists of multiple different types of sun compensating devices okay? and one of such devices is TCR. Okay? Now, T, what is TCR? It is a thyristor control reactor. Now, what it actually works? It, it controls the uh, current drawn by the uh, this particular uh, reactor. How it is controlled? By controlling the turning, uh, uh, turning operation of these switches which are uh, bidirectional switches available there. Now, what is the advantage of having so? The advantage is that when we change the turn on operation of the switches, what we will see? We will see this, this uh, TCR acts as a variable susceptance and its susceptance changes with this firing angle. So, rather if we this susceptance is getting changed, so the current drawn by the TCR will also get changed. So, as the reactive power absorption that is uh, happening to this TCR also will get change. So, that is what the whole uh, I mean summary of this today's lecture. In the next lecture, we will uh, see the harmonics, uh, various harmonics of this TCR currents and the several remedial measures to mitigate those harmonics. Also, we will try to understand the effect of those harmonics and then we will study the remedial measures. Okay? So, up to this uh, for this particular lecture, then Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.